I've been teaching piano for 18 years. 18 also happens to be the legal drinking age here in Australia. That means I'm a big girl piano teacher now, and none of you should bat an eyelid if you catch me drinking on the job. <laughs> Jokes aside, I really love being a piano teacher because I get a front row seat as I watch my students grow and discover themselves through music. Apart from the milestone moments like finishing an exam or a special performance, I get to be there for those everyday light bulb moments of learning. Being a piano teacher is also a great conversation starter. You'd be surprised how many people have a story to tell when it comes to their personal experience with music lessons. And sadly, many of these stories share similar themes of frustration, shame, and regret. Today, we'll be investigating a main character from these stories, music exams. In a recent survey of over 1,000 music teachers from all over the world, a halfway split appeared between those who enrol their students in exams and those who don't. But let's take a more precise look at what's happening closer to home. Exams are a huge part of our private music education culture here in Australia and New Zealand, with 88% of teachers enrolling their students in exams. That's a staggering majority. Interestingly, the stats are upside down on the other side of the world. Notice here that 72% of the American part have no intention of ever enrolling their students in exams. Now the stats here don't really prove which pie is better, but it does remind us we have options and we need to consider these options carefully. To be clear, I'm not here to bash on exams one-sidedly. I'll point out the benefits of exams that we should preserve and then we can also explore the potential improvements going forward. Let's dive in. I wanna show you this excerpt from my student's exam report, just briefly. Tempo, structure, themes, projection, part playing. As expected, there's a lot of musical terminology. I always take the time to go through these reports very carefully with my students because the same reason that makes them so helpful is also why they're difficult to decipher. You wanna know what's easier to understand? The letter grade. The student got a B, which is not as good as an A, but better than a C. Keep that idea in mind, because we're gonna play a little game now. You might know it. It's very popular with many parents. It's called, let's compare our children. <laughs> this is Amy. She got an A grade for her grade four piano exam. And this is Jake. He got a C grade for his grade four piano exam. Oh, I know. Amy is better at piano than Jake. Amy is talented. Or well, maybe she works hard. Maybe both. Jake, on the other hand. Should Jake quit piano? <laughs> maybe he's not cut out for this if he only managed to scrape through with the bare minimum pass mark. Now we all know quantified data alone, like a letter grade, can't capture everything. That's why we have those big long exam reports, remember? But let me sneak you some insider information, details that even the exam report couldn't capture. Amy meticulously prepared for her exam, painfully perfecting the performance of five songs. And that's it, nothing else. That's basically all she did in piano last year. When Amy first started lessons, they were filled with learning and new discovery, and she was excited to take on every new challenge. In recent times, Amy finds her lessons and her practice tedious, boring. She'll continue with piano, though, because it makes her parents proud. Jake, on the other hand, oh, Jake loves playing piano. This is evident in his dedication towards regular and voluntary practice. But Jake gets really nervous performing in front of strangers. Exams are a stressful occasion, to put it lightly. He's much more comfortable playing in front of his family and friends. But Jake's music really comes alive when he's composing his own music and recording them using music production software on his laptop. But I guess you don't find that out in the traditional piano exam. Poor Jake. Maybe you knew a Jake. Maybe you were Jake, or some variation of him. I was Amy. 
I finished grade eight piano in primary school. That's the highest numeric level of assessment in Australia. Then I graduated with my diploma in piano performance at the age of 13. Did it work? Are you impressed? <laughs> but hang on a second. You haven't even heard me play piano. But isn't it interesting how much faith we have in the system that we can determine a musician's skill by simply referring to the highest level examination that they've completed? It's no wonder why teachers and parents all over Australia are shoving their kids through exams to collect more certificates. They're so consumed with paper chasing. Well, today, I stand here before you as a model student of the system, a story of success. But let me describe to you those exam-focused years of learning in just one word, narrow. Think about it. Not every piano student wants to be a professional concert pianist. I bet Jake would rather eat a moldy sandwich than be a concert pianist. But this is how we train all of our students inside our narrow-minded system. Every year, we curate a musical program that the students have to polish to performance perfection. And then we rinse and repeat until they can't take it anymore. If you were only allowed to eat five food items prepared exactly the same way for one entire year, you'd be missing a lot of essential nutrients in your diet. And I wouldn't blame you if you got sick of eating the same foods over and over again. But when our students get sick of practicing the same songs over and over again, we call them lazy. We deprive them of a well-balanced learning curriculum. We submit them to harsh tests for quality control. And then we get upset when they fall off the conveyor belt because they didn't fit inside our narrow mold. Friends, isn't it time we overhaul this factory-style education system? Remember our Australian pie? That pie is cold. The recipe is old. It's time to be bold. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> I want to share this quote with you from Tim Arnold. It doesn't rhyme, unfortunately. Tim is the Executive Director of Global Operations from an internationally recognised music examination board. This is what he has to say about exams. An exam is a syllabus, not a curriculum. A curriculum is a plan of action for a year, whereas a syllabus is a measure of your temperature at any one point in time. Now, measuring your temperature can tell you a lot about your health, but it doesn't represent every part of your well-being either. I don't personally know anyone who actively pursues a healthy lifestyle for the primary objective of achieving the optimum body temperature. <laughs> good exam grades don't automatically make you a good musician. There's just so much more to learn outside of the strictly defined parameters of standardised exams. All right, well, why don't we just do the exams and then we'll do all those other wonderful things as well. It's a great idea in theory but just not a very realistic option. When you say yes to exams, you basically have to say no to everything else. Modern revisions of exam syllabi reflect this time-poor reality, with the introduction of repertoire exams in recent years across various examination boards. In a repertoire exam, students only have to play pieces or songs. They no longer get tested on scales, technical exercises, ear tests, sight reading, or general knowledge. Even the exam people realise that the modern student doesn't have time to thoroughly prepare for these traditional comprehensive exams. And so they responded with assessment that covers an even smaller scope of learning. Are we really okay with this direction? Sure, if it frees up time so the kids can learn more things, but is it just becoming another way for us to shove the kids through more exam grades even faster than before? Except now, they have even less skills to show for it at the end. Is the next generation of young Australian musicians destined to stay stuck in this endless cycle of paper chasing? Surely we can do better. Come, let's reimagine the way forward together. Firstly, what's working? What do we want to keep? 
we want to continue documenting progress. It's healthy, it's helpful, and encouraging to track growth in a tangible way. Secondly, we want to continue providing feedback, qualitative and honest feedback for the teachers and students, because we want to know what we're doing well, so we can keep doing it. We also need to know what we're not doing so well, so we can do something about that too. Lastly, a good music education system supports accountability and allows people to see results in a way that's easy to understand, even if you have no background in music. Well then, what do we need to change? We need to be collecting data to review progress much more frequently than just once a year at an annual music exam. That's simply not enough data to wholly represent a student's skills and capabilities. Next, we need to equip and empower our students towards self-assessment. How will the next generation of musicians learn to play with confidence or realize their unique artistic identity if we insist on gatekeeping the evaluative process? As it stands, many students believe that their worth as a musician can only be dictated by external voices of validation or proven in those milestone moments on a big stage or in the exam room. Last but not least, we need to stop confining the scope of learning. Let them play Beethoven, Beatles, Beyonce, and BTS. <laughs> and teach them how to play in a band or write and record their own songs. Maybe one day, they'll be the next name on that list. So how does everything here come together? What's the big idea worth sharing? It's surprisingly simple. The path forward for modern musicians is to go back to the core of music using current recording technology. Let me explain. We don't measure temperature with a ruler and we don't calculate speed with measuring cups. So what's the most appropriate instrument of measurement when it comes to music? Well, music as a unit at its core is simply sound. So instead of comparing letter grades or trying to make sense of written reports where someone is describing the sound that they heard, let's just record the sound. And don't wait for a special occasion to press record. Do it regularly. Record in lessons, record during practice, and then use this data for healthy and helpful comparison. Compare two different texts from one practice session. Compare how you sound today to how you sounded yesterday. Compare how you sounded last year with how you sounded the years before. Let's compare our children with themselves. It's easy to recognize improvement by comparing videos from a timeline. You can do this even if you have no musical background. Want to see how it works? Here is video footage of the same student taken just two years apart. picture paints a thousand words. Nowadays, our pictures move and make sounds too. In 2020, teachers all over the world had to suddenly respond to the global pandemic by taking our teaching online. It was at that time I realized that most of my students already had access to electronic devices with video recording capabilities. We can start now and create powerfully convincing video evidence of progress with no creative limits on what you can learn and record. Round up the family and film a Christmas carol that you can email to your friends at the end of the year. Record the chorus of your favorite song while singing and playing at the same time. One day you'll get to look back in disbelief at your interesting taste in music and appreciate how far you've come in more ways than one. Well, this all sounds like a lot of fun but videos from your dingy practice room, they're not official like exams, and they're not remarkable like performing on a big stage. We glorify these milestone moments, but 
deep down we understand that the real magic happens during the daily grind back in our private practice studios. It's the same magic that makes exams and performances possible in the first place. The practice studio is, and has always been, the real stage for developing our artistry. Our new music education system is ready and right here in front of us. Current recording technology allows us to capture student development at all stages of learning, creating a meaningful documentary of their unique musical evolution. Recordings also provide qualitative feedback on musicianship, and so students can listen to themselves and learn how to actively engage with their artistry through self-assessment. On top of that, recordings reveal whether teaching methods and practice techniques have actually been effective. Finally, students will no longer be confined by the strict and narrow assessment guidelines set out by traditional exam syllabi. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the dawn of a new era in private music education with a simple system that redirects the spotlight from the exam room back into the practice room, from paper chasing back to the core of making music. Let's celebrate music in its truest form using today's technology to capture and then showcase the musician's everyday process and preserve the results of their hard work and diligence. These are the finest ingredients with which we can bake our fresh new pie. It looks so good. Don't you want to try?